So due to the fact that this is a 10 minutes in input, I cannot speak about the whole of building management, um, but it is all a personal and a work uh, attitude. So uh, speaking about uh, building, it starts with the design, of course. You mentioned also my partner, Janusz Karas, and me working on uh, housing projects for many years. And I added this um, uh, artwork from Congo because it's all about patina. It's all about not the paper we make drawings on. It's all about the material that is exposed to nature, that material that is wear and tear of sunlight, rain, water, acid rain, you might call it today. And I would like to give you some ideas for your uh, discussion now. So I would like to go on to say it's all in a limbo. So it's uh, housing complexes, especially mass housing complexes, have their own rituals, laws, and ways how to uh, maintenance uh, organization is done. And it's a complete change from a personal care to an industrialistic uh, industry of uh, cleaning. Yeah? So what we really need is to think how the methods of garden maintenance should be adapted to whatever we heard today or will hear in this um, symposium. Uh, the holistic approach of maintenance has to be discussed. Is there any irrigation in future? And on the other side of the discussion, is there anybody interested to do composting? Already 20 years ago, I started to implement composting into Viennese housing projects. It was kind of difficult to make the managers make it understand. Also then I wanted to bring uh, bird feeders to the housing uh, uh, entrance gates, not easy to make management people understand. So I think tenants have to take action. It's really the engagement, it's the uh, additional work of the people who are in the site, as we have heard it in the lecture before the, the break. Well, I added here that garden maintenance starts with the design. But who is responsible? So when we start on the building side, when the earthworks is uh, about to be changed, already it's a decision who is in charge of the good soil, who is selling the soil out of the land. So you arrive on the site and there is no soil given because it's sold out. So on the other side, there is the tools, there are the many maintenance um, reg regulations, and there is this tradition of garden maintenance, which is a 12 month a year management plan. And you need to have supervisors, you need to have people who guide the teams and make it a good complex project. So in uh, tradition, there was a change. So the maintenance of public spaces uh, has changed to be a tool driven maintenance, it's machines. So of course, today tree, tree climbing is very fashionable. But as you see here in one of our major uh, streets, Maria Hilferstraße in Vienna, the <clears throat> regular cut of the trees has to be done with big machines. And as you see on the uh, little images above, the security of the trees, it's in its industry today. And for my, for my impression, architects and planners have to readjust. I did this photo in Munich several years ago of an office building where the architects thought the trees have to go under the buildings, but this tree will never experience rainwater. So I think it's a very artificial idea and maybe even a wrong design uh, solution to plant trees below buildings. Well, by tradition, there was a management plan per the year. So this is just an Im image to show you that from January to December, there is work that has to be done. And in these uh, garden management plans, 
uh, you can experience change of attitude, how you want to keep the lawn, be it a wild meadow or be it a cut lawn, but also do you want to have fruit trees or less fruit trees? So even today, the industry of uh, nurseries make uh, cherry trees without fruit. So you can plant them and they are not dirty any longer. Huh? So just imagine it's a start from the design, but also with the tools, tools have changed a lot. So there are new tools out and it's also a new profession. So I think it's a new ex acceptance of the gardening uh, culture profession needed to make uh, ecological proof, to make it a work that the understanding Standing is that the workmen, the workwoman on site, the gardeners have to be educated. In our country, there is no education of plant information any longer. It was cut out of the pedagogic programs because other image, in, in other <clears throat> in content was more important. Just imagine garden workers without education of plant knowledge. No good. We have to go on and we have to reorganize education for gardeners. So this is unfortunately German now, but I will make it quick. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you that it's uh, uh, also besides the monthly maintenance, I, I said there is a yearly maintenance possible. And what we really need to do is the tree cutting because in the mass housing complexes, there is also the danger of being hit by dry um, uh, roots, uh, by, by, by dry branches. There is also the cut of the big shrubs and of the herbaceous borders. And of course, there is the question of how to deal with the weeding, with the natural lawns and with the animal life. And of course, it's a question of how to maintain irrigation. And so in this case, when I look back, I give you now some images of housing complexes I was attached to. And just to tell you that up into these 50s, 60s and 70s in Europe, it was very, very traditional to have gardener teams included in the mass housing management uh, on site, but now it's outsourcing. So starting around 90s and 2000 years, the outsourcing was very, very common. So I think today we have to team up with the tenants and we did it with some of the housing projects like car free housing and risk art housing in Munich, where the tenants started to do the maintenance. So I was living in Munich for some years and exactly as I, he said before, at, at teaching at the academy there, I was living in Gevofak house with a garden maintenance team, which was part of the company of Gevofak. And they had to clean and to maintain the kindergartens, the courtyards. And I was looking into this courtyard for like this 12, 15 years, and there was a compost and there was an irrigation. When we did uh, the Kafri housing estate, there was no longer in Vienna uh, a garden maintenance team on site. So the, uh, the tenants decided when we did this, it's four, uh, two courtyards and it's side gardens and it's six roof gardens. And I just show you now the site plan. And here you see the difference between 2000 and 2012, what happened with the uh, pond in the, in the bamboo garden or in the, in the second courtyard. Well, there was a green group and they decided we do the maintenance. And we really had a lot of effort in this housing estate of 160 flats to have a green group by themselves. It did not end luckily because one of the guys, he really overdid his efforts. He was exhausted, yeah? It was the maintenance of these sites by themselves. It needs tools. You have to have machines, like you see the climbing plant. And now, 20 years later, the climbing plant you see up there, it was cut three months ago because there were mice up on the seventh floor. 
on the top of this, uh, um, of this housing estate, you see the vegetable gardens and they were implanted by the community and they are very, very successful. So I'm a bit critical about what managers think. Mice in the uh, fifth floor are dangerous and tenants, they want to have zucchinis, they want to have their tomatoes on the roof. So uh, the next housing project is Risk Art in English. It's Wagnis. It's the company's name. Imagine they call themselves Risk, really. And we are Risk number four. And so this was called Wagnis Art number four. And after an um, urbanistic competition of, of three uh, forms, of three varieties, the tenants decided to have the continents. It's from Europe to Africa, five buildings called after the continents of the world. They have two roof gardens, two inner courtyards. One is a wild meadow. One is a courtyard for meeting. And then they have a lot of side gardens. And all of this, again, was in the concept a bit more advanced. The major earthwork was done by a company. The tree plantings was done by a company. But the planting of the shrubs, of the herbaceous plants, of all the herbs, it was done by the tenants and I just like to show you, here we had a discussion with the tenants and they were discussing the vegetable planting on the roof, which you see on the right is the vegetable roof. And we discussed who and how to do it. Even there was a decision for the staircases to make interior green, but I share this uh, not at this moment, I like to share with you the plant days. We did planting by tenants. It was in um, spring of 2018 and in the summer of 2019. And for all the tenants who were taking part, there were tools. The plants were brought in by the nurseries. And then when we had uh, the distribution uh, and then we had the work, there was coffee and cake for everybody. So then they, we did a manual for the maintenance. And in this, we have as well as- uh, Maria, excuse yeah? me to interrupt you. I go um, on. Um, we are at um, 12 minutes and maybe we, you can go on, but then we cannot do some questions, which is good with me. But I'm uh, finishing. It's done. Yeah. I just wanted to say I started on the master plan and the preliminary design of Biotop City Vienna, and I'm looking forward to new projects. And this is the case for you now to ask for questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Maria. Okay. Uh, I, I, I knew that you were coming to a conclusion, but um, thank you very much for uh, showing uh, uh, your experience with us. Maybe you want to unshare your screen. And um, um, I'm curious to uh, read the questions of the audience to Maria. So please use the chat and Uli and uh, Irene will help us ask Maria. The first question which I would like to ask you, Maria, is that you, of course, addressed the aspect of maintenance. And um, it's, a, it's a paradox in a way, I think. And maybe you can elaborate a bit about that. Because on the one hand side, there is many cities, for example, Breda, but also uh, others here in, in the Netherlands that actually could improve biodiversity by cutting maintenance uh, costs, for example, less mowing of the grass and stuff like that. So biodiversity and nature inclusivity as a result of actually having less money to spend. But then on the other hand, there is the designs that require machine cleaning or machine maintenance. And if it's not, it increases the costs. So how can you position uh, our profession and what can you give us as learnings from this paradox? Well, thank you. I, I just like to be quick and say, of course, life is a paradox. And that's <laughs> the interesting about it. Yeah. I just like to stress the point that for future education and information is the vital, it's the diamond of the life. Yeah. And if we go on to discuss who is getting work in Europe and who is distributing work in Europe, 
I think garden culture can only develop if there is knowledge in distribu distribution of knowledge. Now, concerning the tools, of course, this is the complex question of industrialization. But if you think about plumbing, electricity, uh, insulation, all of our building uh, partners are working on how to get the buildings less uh, oil driven and reducing all kind of asp asbestos and all stuff of poison out. So in the gardening uh, culture, it's similar looking, and therefore I'm stressing the compost culture, looking for soil uh, protection and looking for good productive companies who understand that a new way of habit of garden uh, gardening is needed and i'm in in my age i'm i'm used to garden companies who are pushed down low in their business in the tenders reducing giving um, a discount that when they arrive on site, they are already tired, exhausted, and the tools are not given. Yeah. So I like to speak about give the money to the gardeners that you share with the whole of the building team. We say it's two to three percent of the netto building costs that landscaping is uh, budget. And that's no good. You have to rise the netto budget to give more impact on the surrounding of the housing estates. Well, we heard your call, Maria. Thank you very much.